Hello friends, today we are going to discuss one of the important topic, molecular tools used in genetic engineering. Molecular tools used in genetic engineering. Out of which, today we are going to discuss some of the DNA markers. DNA markers are one of the important tool in genetic engineering. What are DNA markers? DNA markers are nothing but stretch of DNA or sequences of DNA which are used in mapping of genes. What is a mapping of gene? That means what are gene mapping? Simply it is used to locate the location of a gene or identifying the distance, measuring the distance between the genes. Is it very easy to identify the locus? Actually what exactly will do? That means by the, uh, the DNA markers, they will not exactly identify the location of a gene, that means the, the gene locus, but they will approximately give an idea where they are present. For example, if my house is second left third gate and nearby there is a post office, we have to identify the post office which is a landmark. That means approximation leads to accuracy. That's how they will do. That means the DNA markers will give you an approximate idea of gene locus. That means what we call gene mapping. And most important DNA markers are RFLPs, say restriction fragment line polymorphisms, RFLPs, restriction fragment length polymorphism, to VNTRS, variable number, tandem repeats. Otherwise called my mini satellites. P STRs. Simple tandem repeat. Called micro satellites. SNPs. Single nucleotide. Polymorphisms. That means the overall function role of DNA markers is genetic mapping. I told you already, it will give us an approximate data where the genes are located. And for that, the important tools are RFLP, which are say restriction fragment length polymorphism, then variable number tandem repeats, otherwise called mini satellites. Then the simple tandem repeat would be STR, otherwise called microsatellites, and four single nucleotide polymorphisms, SNPs. Today we are going to discuss about RFLPs and BNDRS because they have inter relationship with each other and they are important tools in DNA fingerprinting or DNA profiling as well. How they uh, involve as a, uh, evolve as effective marker tools, we are going to discuss, okay? Then I told you already, what exactly they will do? G gene mapping. Why? For what? What is the purpose of gene mapping? We have to identify defector genes or unhealthy genes which are which having some aberration. So, predetermined identification of these defector genes plays an important role in effective elimination of Ne, you know unwanted genome, genome what we call negative eugenics you know, positive and negative eugenics that means we have to prohibit the entry of unwanted genome into the population into the race which may have adversarial consequences for that this evolution of molecular tools is indispensable and how they will flow i told you already identification of the gene locus and how how they will perform say rflp first we will discuss point by point rflps you know, they are randomly distributed along the length of DNA and apparently they don't have any function. They are randomly distributed. Apparently no function in general. And how and where they are present. You know, for example, you know, this is a DNA. This 
is R1, R2 and R3. These are restriction sites for enzymes. This is DNA. One. Okay. If you cleave here, then these two four fragments totally. Take one more example. Is another DNA. They have two restriction sites for an R1 and terminal R3, resulting to three fragments. Three fragments. Here the same enzymatic activity. The inference is that the DNA sequence which shall be cut down by restriction endonucleases resulting to fragments of different lengths. This is very important. Result, that means because of restriction endonuclease activity, it leads to fragments, fragments of different lengths. Different lengths. Why they are called as restriction fragment length polymorphisms? Restriction are with respect to enzymatic role. Restriction endonucleases, simply called molecular, we already we are knew that. The evolution, now the development of entire genetic engineering depends on this very tiny enzyme. This is an important enzyme, though it is which is important role and it, it propels the concept of genetic engineering. Restriction endonucleases or molecular Since these RFLP is derived out of restriction endonuclease activity, they are named after restriction fragment means it is to different lengths. They are unevenly distributed. One fragment have say for example a, a 32 a space, one may have 28, one may have 30, you know, 60. That means different lengths. And they are called as polymorphs because since they have different lengths, they are called as polymorphs. Here, here, in case of DNA1, there are four fragments. In case of DNA2, there are three fragments. Why? Because R2, here R2 and how, when, where we can identify restriction fragment length molecules. They can be recognized by the sequences. That means zones where the restriction activity can be done. Say, this is a zone. Say, for example, here the R1 restriction activity is cut down here. And R2, another activity, that R, another cut down activity, R3. So, these, and these, Endonucleases will be readily identified these and accordingly they will break down. That is how they will get identified. Very important. And how, what about this DNA2? Which here DNA1 there are four fragments DNA2 because R2 actually there, but because of a mutation, say a change in a single base pair, it lost the recognition sequence. Since it lost only three. Because R2, which actually the restriction endonuclease, specific restriction endonuclease is very important. The activity is specific, cannot recognize the zone because of imitation. So somehow, on the whole, the, the point is clear. Different DNA fragments, that means difference with respect to different lengths. So uh, totally considered as a restriction fragment length polymorphism delivered after endonuclease activity. Okay, this is about the basic scenario and what exactly RFLPs are and how they act as effective DNA markers and how and, and their role in you know, genetic disorders and how they get delivered. Next we'll discuss, okay? Then regarding next issues, how it works is very important. That, that means the mechanism, the mechanism of restriction fragment length polymorphism. I told you already, in genetic disorders where the, there is a possible outcome of a genetic disorder, how it identified. That means identification and the mapping of a particular defect to a gene is very important. I told you the objective is to map mapping of a particular defect to gene. For example, sickle cell anemia, anemia present in chromosome 11, cystic fibrosis, chromosome 7, Huntington's chorea, chromosome 4, Alzheimer's disease, chromosome 21. So they have to identify a defect to genes. It's about mapping, you know, how they will perform. That means the mechanism. How you will perform mechanism? Okay. We are going to discuss by taking a case. You know, there is a particular genetic disorder 
in a particular strand, you know, there is a lineage. So out of 11 individuals, you believe three have a probable defective gene. Okay. How to identify? And that means for sure, think on concrete. What we'll do? First, you will collect that cellular DNA. That DNA will be subjected to restriction activity. That means restriction endonucleases. They will cut down the DNA into different fragments. Then, the separation by gel electrophoresis. That means, say, agarose gel. After that, blood transfer. Blood transfer means to a nylon membrane. Then, here, the most important point, RFLP banding pattern. Here, you compare the suspected individuals to that of normal individuals. Okay, normally, most of the family relatives, how they will perform? Same say, part of the hybridization. That means probes, DNA probes, then autoridography. That means X ray film, simply what we call. Here, if, there, if the suspected individuals have a disorder, then there will be a RFLP marker according. I told you already, they will be useful in gene mapping. How? They will give an approximate rate of gene location. What we call RFLP marker, RFLP marker pertaining to that particular gene, that means a disorder. If there is a, if there is a such marker, then you will come to a conclusion that yes, this individual might get, he has a suffering with that, that this, such a particular kind of disorder. Otherwise, he is safe. So, it's about, so first you will take the DNA, you will cut down. That means given small crack by means of restricted endonuclear activity, then separation by agrogel electrophosis, for instance, then blood transfer to nylon membrane, it's a basic it's a basic protocol, no? Then are then what we call hybridization by means of DNA probe. Okay, DNA probe generally are radio isotope for identification, no? Isotope or you will add you will add biotin, no, or epitope. Then so that means Autoridography, X-ray films, you will ascertain whether there is a gent, you know, a, a RFLP marker or not. That's how the whole scenario will end. Let me here compare between the suspected point and, and the normal individual. So it's about the how the regarding the mechanism of RFLP. Then we'll study how they import how they get detected. Detection of RFLPs is most important. That means what we call counting. There are two methods. Southern hybridization and PCR. RFLP counting. That means detection. These by means of two ways. Southern hybridization to PCR. That means polymerase chain reaction. Chain reaction. First, southern hybridization. See, in the simple see you, I will give you a diaphragm picture representation. Sus this is suspected restriction site. That means DNA probe. Suspected restriction site. Then after following the normal pattern, you will get the nylon membrane. We have discussed. That means gel electrophoresis, blood transfer and all that. Nylon membrane this is. Then you will add the DNA probe for hybridization. Then autoridography will subject. If there is a restriction if there is no restriction site, 
then it will be single band. If there is a restriction site, there are two bands. No restriction sites. Yes. The basic view, you know, with regard to solid amplification, that means what exactly will do? Say you you will subject the DNA to restriction fragment. That means get the small fragments. The small fragment will get separated by means of electrophoresis. Then blood transfer to neuron membrane. Then you will add the DNA probe. That means DNA probe is in here means restriction a suspected restriction sites. You would have to ascertain whether there is a particular thing or not. Just suspect one. Right? Then after that, a hybridization pattern. Then R will be the same. If there is a restriction site, but what we call here, what exactly the DNA probe will do? DNA probes are nothing but the oligonucleotide strands or a DNA strand, actually, which you will be used to identify the target sequence by complementary base pairing. You know, complementary base pairing. Probe. Probe means here you, you will use it as a, a, a kind of hint to identify the target source by complementary base pairing. It is simply called hybridization. Say, for example, DNA DNA hybridization. That means here different DNA, the different DNAs, they align together. That means they, they align together. That means homologous DNAs, not non homologous DNAs. This homologous DNA, when they align and they will be used, that means this DNA path probes. Through the technique of hybridization, will be used to enter the target sequence something by complementary base pairing. So, so basic mechanism I'm telling. Okay, the same concept here also. If there is a restriction site, so two bands will form. Yes. If there is no single band form, the only thing we have to observe in the auditorium in the X-ray film is single band. No, two bands. Yes, that's it. It's about southern southern hybridization. That means it is one of the important. Technique in detection, what we call counting of RFLPs. Okay, then the second one PCR. I'll do the same concept here, but the thing is, PCR primers will be added here. That's it. Say, this R1, this R2, this R3. You add PCR primer. PCR primer which can align at the end of the that means restriction site. The concept is same. Say after the new PCR, then enzymatic activity, then gel electrophoresis, then blood transfer. After attaining all this, you will add that means for hybridization. For hybridization, no? then that, that, that leads to for hybridization. Same concept here, the nylon membrane. If there is no restriction site, single band. If there is restriction site, two band. The only thing is you will add PCR primers. That means the here point is you will get multiple copies of the subject in the sample to the PCR, then followed by the enzymatic activity between different small fragments, then gel electrophoresis, that means the active electrophoresis, then blood thing, blood transfer say, through an membrane, then hydration. Then you will add DNA probe. Then here the thing is PCR primers which can align any on either side of the restriction sites. Then you will observe for auto radiography. That means hybridization and feeding into the DNA probe, which can get a radioisotope or epitope. You know, this is very important, or even biotin also for identification. Then hybridization, that means X-ray films. Say first the DNA, the enzymatic activity, that means restriction to nucleus, small fragment, separation by electrophoresis. Then you will get blood transfer to a, to a, to a myelin membrane. Then hybridization, that means by adding a DNA probe, then auto radiography. Here we will observe if there is no restriction site, single band will form. Single band. If there is, there, if there is yes, that means restriction site, two bands will form. That's how you detect RFLPs. So I told you already, it's the overall concept, the overall role of RFLPs restriction, that means genetic map. Gene identifying a disorder gene. 
Apart from gene, gene uh, uh, identifying, that means gene mapping, they are also useful in you know, DNA fingerprinting. Okay. Then I told you already, for example, how the classical examples that pertain to the role of RFLPs, say the sickle cell anemia. Sickle cell anemia. This is chromosome 11. Then cystic fibrosis. Chromosome 7. Then Huntington scoria. Chromosome 4, then Alzheimer's disease. This is chromosome 21. That means sickle cell anemia, report from chromosome 11, cystic fibrosis from chromosome 7, Huntington's scoria from chromosome 4, Alzheimer's disease from chromosome 21. These are our classical examples. That means RFLP has effectively mapped the gene. That means genes, disorder of genes of different chromosomes. These examples okay then the most another important concept that means dna marker is vntrs variable number tandem lipids vntrs variable number tandem lipids The simply mini satellites. You know, just like the restriction fragment length polymorphism RFLPs, they are also DNA fragments having different lengths. They are also DNA fragments having different lengths. Then what is the distinguishment between the two? Restriction endonucleases, they resulted because of random mutations. RFLPs, they resulted because of random mutations. Random mutations at restriction sites. So we have discussed like R1, R2, where the restriction endonuclease activity in cleavage activity is reported. There the random mutations out of which uh, RFLPs will come. But here it is based on differences, you know, differences in base sequences of DNA points or regions. What exactly is, say you will take one DNA, DNA1, okay, this R1 and this R2 and you report here. Four copies, four copies of VNTRS. Okay. You take another DNA, is R1, is R2, then you here there are ten VNTRS. N V N T R S. That means I told already variable number variable with respect to what? Here there are certain nucleotide sequences. That means short nucleotide sequences in tandem are in variable note. Variable note means say this is DNA one and this is DNA two. Four copies say e, that means they are in tandem. Tandem and each copy consists of hundred base pairs. That means tandem repeats pertain to short base sequences. And here each block repeats represent hundred base pairs and they and they are in tandem in the form of four way that means four tandem for four four tandems but here ten say each hundred base pair that means 
tandem, a particular sequence is the repetition. It's like a repetition. Okay. But here the, there is a variation in the repetition. Variations in tandems. What we seem to call variation number. Variable number. What we call variable number. There is a variation with respect to the tandems. That works out what exactly called variable tandem variable. I may have 10 blocks. That means say 10 copies. Another guy may have 11 copies at a particular DNA region. Since the DNA differentiation is based on the differences in the number of repeats. That's what, what exactly called variable number tandem repeats. This is very, very, very important because each and every person has, has his own VNTRS. One, say for example, I have many and different VNTRS. The same like RFLP is many and different RFLPs. And each and every individual have different. That means they are unique. They are unique, particular to one particular individual only. That's it. There is no match. Almost there is no match. That is why, that is how the VNTRS and restriction fragment length polymorphisms becomes the basis for DNA fingerprinting or DNA profiling because of just because of this unique nature you know this is very unique because different DNA points have differences in terms of with respect to number of tandem repeats okay and then I told you already and it is because of the RFLP is because of random mutation it is because of difference in, in, in respect to number of base sequences this is a distinguishing between VNTRS and RFLP but both are basis for DNA fingerprinting. This is very important. Now, there is a disorder. Huntington Korea. Here, Huntington Korea is because of exceeding the repeats of beyond 40. That means, genetic disorders linked with the variable number tandem repeats. That means, if the degree of repetition is beyond, then it, will be, it leads to a genetic disorder. Huntington Korea is, is on that line. That means it shows how effective the VNTRS and RFLP is as DNA markers, particularly in the identification of genetic disorders. I already discussed in the beginning, they play an important role in the elimination of, you know, negative eugenics. That means there is, there is a certain unwanted genome that should not get into the population race. This is very important, no? Then they are, they are all important steps in, in predetermination. This is very important to roll in and they evolve the you know, RDNA technology or particular genetic engineering. Then, how they get important in genetic engineering, the role in genetic engineering, how they, that means genetic fingerprinting, both. Same concept you have to apply here. So they will take three DNA samples, so DNA1, and it has This is VNTRS, okay, and DNA2, these are also VNTRS, that means repeats, repeats of short base sequences. This is DNA3, Then this, this is R1 and R2. This R1 restriction active. That means we have RFLP, VNTRS in genetic fingerprinting. You need to observe one point, this is DNA 1 and DNA 2 and 3. Here one have 3 tandem repeats, here have 4 and here have 6. Then another region have 6, then he has 7, so it is a 5, then 6, then it is 8. That means here there is a differences with the I told already. 
each and every person VNTRS is unique. The number of tandem repeats is unique. Therefore, the R1 under the restriction activity because it leads to RFLPs. That means restriction fragment length polymorphism caused by VNTRS. That's why I told you in the beginning, they are both are interrelated and they are both are interrelated in the way and they have important role in DNA single printing and as effective DNA marker. Say because of VNTRS leads to RFLPs. Then later the, the conventional pattern of gel electrophoresis hybridization then at UV, with the help of DNA probes, DNA probe, that means complementary base pairing, you will identify the target sequence. That's how both RFL, that means RFL will be caused by VNTRS, the rolling genetic genetic uh, simply called what the, the basic scheme is saying. First, you get the DNA. We will cut down the small fragments, gel electrophoresis, then blood transfer to nylon membrane, then hybridization, then the DNA probe. I don't know what DNA probe is nothing but a DNA strand having which is radioactive isotope with ha with I will, will identify the target sequence. That means will complementary base pairing. Then which are the same will be observed. That means and uh, analyzed in the in the way of excretion. That means auto reductivity. This is the whole central scheme a protocol of RFLP. The only thing is the RFLPs and VNDRs are unique. That is why and they are effective DNA markers in genetic, you know, in different uh, I am mapping of genetic disorders as I told already, sickle cell anemia with respect to chromosome 11, okay. Then in the next class we will discuss and some of the important uh, uh, tools with respect to genetic disorders, okay. Thanks for watching.